GMGP was cracking with y'all wake up fam no show this morning but I got you covered don't fear your boy GQ ain't gonna let you roll into week 16 without a damn show so I appreciate you tapping in if you're new to the channel new to the station we normally go live every Monday and Friday 8 a.m eastern standard time we have a good time me and my co-host Jay Rich he's out vacation he'll be out next week don't worry your boy got you covered we got a lot of dope content on tap for y'all today, tomorrow, Sunday, Monday. We got it popping. We got you covered. So hit the thumbs up button, like the content, subscribe to the channel. But we got a lot to get to. We're going to talk a little Pook and Nakua, talk some Rams, talk the Saturday games, talk about the Sunday slate. And I got y'all covered for Monday. So go ahead, get that Christmas shopping done. Stay strapped in, tapped in. Let's get it. Let's go. Last night, the L.A. Rams took down the New Orleans Saints 30-22. to And my goodness, Puka Nakua, real damn deal. Matthew Stafford was phenomenal. 328-2. Derek Carr, all the crap that he's taken over the past couple of weeks, he absolutely smashed for you. If you had to start Derek Carr in a pinch this past Thursday, he held it down. 319, three touchdowns, one interception. Who did not get it done for us? My goodness. Alvin Kamara. I mean, two weeks in a row has essentially been a bad spot in your roster. So if you started Alvin Kamara last night, you didn't get much of anything from him at all except the five receptions. Through the air, Chris Olave did his thing, nine for 123. Wish he could have gotten the end zone, 13 targets. Very good for Chris Olave if you rolled him out there in your fantasy lineups. And Rashid Shahid. A lot of people probably did not start Shahid in lineup leagues, but in best ball, he is the quintessential best ball dart. Scored a touchdown, big play, 45-yard touchdown pass. Juwan Johnson got in the end zone, and A.T. Perry cashes 13.5 receiving yard prop by catching one for a TD late in that game. But I really want to spend some time really quickly talking about the Rams and their young talent. Let's start off with the running back, Kyron Williams. This was a player that a couple of years ago I had as one of the top-rated running backs coming out of the 2022 class when he was matriculating on from Notre Dame. Didn't happen early for him. Ran slow at the combine. Got drafted in the fifth round. Didn't do much his rookie season, but the buzz and the enthusiasm and hype started to build up and gain for him throughout the summer going into the season. Took over as a starter. The Rams shipped away Cam Akers, and now you've got a dude who has been an absolute dynamite league-winning type asset. Fourth in the NFL with almost 1,100 rushing yards. He's got nine touchdowns. On the season, on only 208 carries, he missed about three to four weeks of game time. But you just look at what Kyron has done over the past five weeks. I mean, this this is this is what you want. Four games, four out of his last five, he's gone over 20 attempts, over 100 yards. He scored a touchdown in three of those games, and he's caught some passes. Didn't have to do much this game, but five, three, three, and six. So if you're playing in those leagues with the running backs, PPR leagues, he has been incredible. And what a testament to just because if you don't run fast at the combine has nothing to do with if you're going to get some opportunity. And once you get that opportunity, trust the damn tape. The film was incredible on Kyron Williams coming out of Notre Dame. All he needed was some opportunity and now is paying and yielding dividends for us in fantasy. What a monster performance from Kyron Williams. And the Rams' new wide receiver won, Puka Effin Nakua. Nine for 164, one touchdown. Monster in this matchup. And watching this game, Cooper Cup could have had a bigger game. Uh, that touchdown pass right off the tip of his fingers, I believe it was right before halftime, missed a couple of other plays. I'm watching Cooper Cup, and every time he gets hit, gets up and he looks like he's in pain, looks like he's hurt, and looks like he's about to limp off the field. I just wonder if we are truly seeing a changing of the guard. I talked about this two weeks ago. I said Puka Naku is a lock for 1,300 yards. I think he's going to approach 1,500 on the season. My co-host Jay Rich said I was batshit crazy to even insinuate Nakua could reach 1,300 yards. Well, 12th in the NFL in reception, 6th in yards, and he's a mere, I believe, 140-something yards away from setting the all-time record for receiving yards for a rookie. This dude is unfreaking real And let this be a lesson to you all out there. 
Just because a player is drafted in the fifth round, the fourth round, does not mean that they are an auto sell, does not mean that they are going to be a bum in the NFL after a couple of weeks. Also, doesn't necessarily mean that the player is going to be a superstar. You've got to use some context, some football common sense when you're looking at these situations. The opportunity that Puka has earned himself this season Y'all should have seen this joint coming weeks and weeks and weeks ago. If you got Puka Nakua and you didn't buy into the sell him for any third, sell him for a second round pick, it's not going to happen because he didn't test that fast. Congratulations. You're either advancing on the playoffs, your underdog teams are doing well, or you've got you a locked and loaded top 10 dynasty wide receiver for the foreseeable future. Cooper Cup, a lot of name. The game is starting to dra- drop down a little bit. You have to wonder, are the injuries taking a toll on them? A lot of reports about Cooper Cup earlier this season. It's going to be interesting to see what this Rams team does in the offseason because it doesn't look like Matthew Stafford is slowing down anytime soon. Good team, good win. Keep them in the hunt. And the best thing for us from a fantasy perspective is we will continue to see Kyron Williams get fed, Puka Nakua be targeted, Matthew Stafford to throw the ball because the Rams are right in the thick of the playoff hunt now sitting at eight and seven. Let's move on and talk about the Cincinnati Bengals game versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. Bengals go on the road, travel to Pittsburgh. Both of these teams still jockeying for position inside the AFC North. You look at this total right here. It opened up with 39 and a half points. It has since been bet down to 37 and a half. So this is telling me betters are a little concerned about this game and the scoring potential in this matchup right now, Cincinnati's favored by two and a half points. You've got Jake Browning. You've got Joe Mixon, no Jamar chase in this matchup. So it's going to be a lot of T Higgins, a lot of Joe Mixon and a lot of T Higgins. And those are the guys that you really, really want to highlight and start from this matchup. I think Jake Browning is a viable option. I know Pittsburgh has got a tough defense, but what Browning's been able to do since taking over for Joe Burrow gives me a lot of confidence. And if you started Browning last week, My goodness, you could have just started Browning and Nick Mullins and been set rolling into that playoff matchup. Joe Mixon is going to continue to be fed as the bell cow that he is. Receivers for the Bengals, the only one that I'm truly interested is T. Higgins. I really don't want to play the Tyler Boyd game. I don't want to bet on anybody else from the wide receiver core. Chase Brown, like him. Don't know how much I trust him in this matchup. I like Chase Brown and what he could be a part of this offense in the future, but in a must-win, got to have a spot here in the playoffs, Week 16, I don't know if I'd want to fire up any Chase Brown. On the other side, I don't know who's playing quarterback. I guess Mason Rudolph, Mitch Trubisky, some combination of the two. Doesn't matter to me. This just I, I don't want to deal with any of the pass catchers in this game. Pickens, Deontay Johnson, Pat Fryermuth, if you have other options, I would explore those. The running backs, Najee Harris, Jalen Warren, here we are, right? You can run on Cincinnati, but can Pittsburgh run on Cincinnati? I honestly don't know. We saw Ty Chandler do nasty work last week. I I just, I'm not confident that the Pittsburgh Steelers and their offense are going to be able to take advantage of the defense that you, again, you can run on Cincinnati, but can Pittsburgh run on Cincinnati. You look at the report, uh, KZ suspended for the year, Minka Fitzpatrick out. This this should be a game where Jake Browning feasts. T. Higgins has a monster performance. So coming out of this matchup, Browning, Higgins, Joe Mixon from the Cincinnati side, Pittsburgh, my goodness, it sounds nasty. Najee and Jalen Warren, you probably have no other choice but to start those guys. But I really don't feel good about any of the pass catchers inside of this Cincinnati Bengals matchup. Let me know how y'all feel in the comments below. Let me know how you feel about Cincinnati's uh, Cincinnati's chances against this Pittsburgh Steelers defense. All right, let's move on to a- another game this weekend. And we've got, oh man, on Saturday, Buffalo versus LAC. Buffalo versus LAC. Time stamped this bad boy for the people watching this after the fact. But let's talk about it. Buffalo Bills, 43 and a half point total. This opened up 42 and a half points, was bet up. So they're projecting some scoring in this matchup. The Bills favored by 13 and a half points. So they are heavy favorites. The Chargers with newly fired head coach, uh, fired head coach Brandon Staley. So they've got an interim. I believe he's this linebackers coach or something like that. I have no clue. All I know is no Herbert, no Keenan Allen. 
Austin Eckler was on his podcast with Matt Harmon talking about he doesn't know if he's going to play next season. This feels like an absolute beatdown in brewing waiting to happen. Fire up your Buffalo Bills. I shouldn't have to tell you this. Josh Allen, fire him up. James Cook, fire him the hell up. Stephon Diggs, I know he has been pretty bad over the past five weeks. You look at what he's done. 74 yards is the high. He's given us about 25 yards a game. No touchdowns. It's been a nasty five-week stretch. Fire him up versus the Chargers. Fire up Dalton Kincaid. I believe he is in this week. No Keenan Allen. Uh, a cornerback is doubtful. This is just, listen, y'all. Chargers at home, they, they should good foot put in them. You fire up your bills on the Chargers side of the ball. Well, Buffalo. Gabe Davis, I don't want to do it. I'm just letting you know right now. Lineup leagues, I want no part. He has not been a beneficiary in that offense since Joe Brady took over. The, the real true beneficiary since Joe Brady's uh, ascension into that offensive coordinator role over Ken Dorsey has been James Cook. You look at the numbers for Davis and Diggs, all trending down since Joe Brady took over. But this is a prime matchup where the betters and the sports betters and the money is saying this is going to be some scoring. Fire up those bills with confidence outside of Gabe Davis. But in best ball, you're fine with Gabe. On the Chargers side, listen, y'all, I don't know if I can recommend it. I do not think I can recommend Austin Eckler as a start this week. This is tough. A lot of name in that Austin Eckler game, but we're not getting the production right now. So this is one where I would be sitting Austin Eckler. Josh Palmer, I have no problem starting him in this matchup. Easton Stick has to throw the ball to somebody. Tight ends, Gerald Everett, potentially, in a pinch if you needed one. Quentin Johnston, no thank you. There are no other pass catchers in this game from the Chargers side that I want to start. So it's Josh Palmer, no Eckler, no Spiller, no Josh Kelly, and really do not want to roll out Easton Stick. If you've got other options, do that. This one could get ugly real quick with a lame duck interim head coach at the helm for the Chargers. Let's move on to the Sunday slate and talk a little Cleveland and Houston. It doesn't look like we're going to have C.J. Stroud again still dealing with symptoms from his concussion. So we're going to have some combination of Case Keenum, some combination of Davis Mills. I really don't know who's playing quarterback for Houston this week, but there is a chance that Nico Collins is back. You look at the injury report, and you don't see him on there. Noah Brown is questionable. You got Brevin Jordan potentially going to be in. Will Anderson there. Kareem Hunt. Looks like everybody's going to be available for both of these players outside of C.J. Stroud. Let's start with the Cleveland Browns. No Deshaun Watson. We know he's out for the season. Joe Flacco has quietly been pretty damn good since taking over. Uh, you look at him versus Chicago, and by good, I mean good for fantasy purposes, right? I don't mean good as far as he's going to be some long-term starter. But even in a game where he launched three interceptions, he still finished as a top quarterback. For fantasy, Joe Flacco is going to throw the ball. Cleveland's going to throw the ball. David Njoku is going to do his thing. So when you're looking at this game, David Njoku, fire, fire, fire him up as a top elite option at the tight end spot. Amari Cooper, you're firing him up. Jerome Ford, you're playing him and Kareem Hunt. But it's been, it's been a little rocky with old Jerome Ford over the past couple of weeks. You see the carries starting to dissipate a little bit. The production taking a dip not doing as much in the receiving game. This is one where I don't know if he's an auto fire up. I, I'm not going to say Jerome Ford is an auto start from this game. I would much rather, not even close, Devin Singletary over Jerome Ford. You look at what Singletary's done over his last five games. Opportunity is there. I know there's a little lull in there where eight and six carries, but he's getting some work in the receiving game as well. So that game where he only had six carries, he gave you six for 54 through the air. This is around the time they were trying to integrate Damian Pierce in the offense, and it looked like last week they were like, the hell with any of that. Give our guy the ball. We need him to get the ball. He's our most productive running back, and we're right in the thick of the playoff hunt. So from the Houston side of the ball, there's no doubt. Devin Singletary, fire him up. If Nico Collins is in, you're firing him up. And the way that Noah Brown played last week, he actually has some potential to start as well. Maybe in a flex position in a pinch, Noah Brown could be useful. Between these quarterbacks, Flacco's one that's on the radar. I don't want any part of the Houston quarterback room. And then the running backs, Devin Singletary over both of the guys in Cleveland. Now, Amari Cooper is one option. David Njoku's an option. A lot of people asking about Elijah Moore. 
I'd rather not. If you have other options, I would prefer those options to Elijah Moore. So that's it for the Cleveland-Houston game. Let's move on to this gross, disgusting game in which I believe Sam Howe is back in this matchup. He was replaced by Jacoby Brissett, which means if things get a little wonky in this one, they probably would have no problem pulling him out of this matchup either. You see the headline, Jets NFL worst offense faces the league worst defense. Christmas Eve snoozer. There's got it. The immovable force meets the immovable object. Something's got to give in this one. And right now, the only thing given are the points going down. Open up at 38 and a half, 37 and a half point total. The Jets favored by three. No Zach Wilson in this matchup. I honestly don't even know who's playing quarterback for the Jets. Simeon, Aaron Rodgers, who the hell knows? Honestly, it probably doesn't matter much. This is a game where I'm expecting some production from Brees Hall. Come on, Brees. This defense is exploitable. You look at what Brees has done on the ground. Hell, it's not even the last five games. The last 15 games has been little to nothing. The Jets' offensive line is terrible. Where Brees has been getting it done is as a pass catcher outside of last week versus Miami, where they just got foot put in him. He's been good for about five, six receptions. Could get in the end zone as well through the air. You're going to fire up Brees Hall. You're also starting Garrett Wilson. I know it was a letdown last week, but G-Dub is going to be targeted. Get him in there. He's going to get more than four targets that he got last week. Garrett Wilson, you're starting him with low confidence, but you are going to start him. Sam Howe versus this defense, no thank you. Pass on that one. Do not want to play Sam Howe in this matchup. <sighs> if you don't want to play Howe, I know McLaurin had a big day last week versus the Rams in his game. I just I don't want to do it. You, you look at outside of that big game, it's been rough sledding for Terry McLaurin. Losing out all of these games. He's, he's not getting the production. This was, it was a prime matchup versus the Rams. I cannot say right now that I feel confident or would feel confident putting him in a starting spot. Curtis Samuel, Jahan Dotson, same thing with even more sentiment that I don't feel good about starting those guys. Brian Robinson missed last week. Antonio Gibson, all people were excited he was going to get the work. He did not. B-Rob, I believe, is back this week. Let's see, questionable for the game. Yeah, questionable for the game. So volume-based running back, I've got no problem with starting Brian Robinson in this matchup. I don't know how much Sam Howell's going to be able to do. Versus this Jets defense, they are losing. They did lose their safety to here. Whitehead, I don't believe he's going to play. Brees Hall, B-Rob, I'm fine with it. Garrett Wilson, fine with it. But this is a game that... Y'all, honestly, we're looking at the total 37 and a half. It wouldn't shock me if there were two or three defensive touchdowns or a special teams touchdown in this matchup either. Let's pivot on to the Seattle-Tennessee game. And let's see if Will Levis, let's see if Will Levis is going to be in this one. Uh, Kenneth Walker, questionable. Will Levis, questionable. And we're still waiting to see what's going on with Geno Smith. It looked like he was close to playing last week. But this is an easy one, right? You're starting the studs from this game. If Geno plays, you're starting Geno Smith. Kenneth Walker, yes, sir. Roll him out there with confidence. No Zach Charbonnet. You're starting DK Metcalf. You're starting Tyler Lockett. And you must start Jackson Smith and Jigba, the rookie, who's been turning it on as of late. DeAndre Hopkins right there on the cusp of 1,000 yards. You will fire him up. <sighs> Derrick Henry. Um, what do you do? What do you do with Derrick Henry at this stage where he's still getting the volume? Nine yards last week. I think he had 20-something touches. And yeah, over 20 touches and less than uh, less than 10 yards. It just rough week for Derrick Henry, but he's still getting volume. I think I'm still going to start him versus the Seattle Seahawks. We saw what Kyron Williams was able to do to this team. You just, I think I still feel okay with starting Kyron Williams. Let's look at Philly versus this. DeAndre Swift was able to run the ball. They just didn't commit to the run. Let's look at the box score from that game. Yeah, Hurts had 82. DeAndre Swift had 74. Versus the Seattle defense. You look at the 49ers. Let's take a look at that real quick. Versus this defense. Uh, Chris McCaffrey, 145. So, yeah, you're firing up Derrick Henry with little confidence, but you are going to fire up Derrick Henry in this matchup. If Will Levis plays, you really don't want to play him. Tajay Spears, no thank you. You do not feel good about starting Tajay Spears. So from the Tennessee side of the ball, it's Derrick Henry. It's DeAndre Hopkins. No thank you, Traylon Burks. Seattle, you're firing up a lot of guys. Three wide receivers, all three of them. DK, Lockett, JSN. Running backs, Kenneth Walker. And then you will start Geno Smith if Geno Smith is active. We talked about a couple of quarterbacks. Pittsburgh quarterbacks. Uh, who else did we talk about? Easton Stick. Potentially whoever's starting for Houston. Whoever's starting for the Jets. 
you will play Geno Smith over all of those options. Let's move to Indy and Atlanta. Uh, is this the game that we can finally rid ourselves of Arthur Smith, who it seems like he is now on the hot seat after losing to the winless Carolina Panthers last week in a very ugly game? Heineke is going to be starting for the Atlanta Falcons, so Ritter time is over. Jay Rich is sad. There is no more Ritter games. Going to happen for the end of the year. 44.5 point total. We know Indianapolis can score with the best of them, one of the top scoring teams in the NFL. The problem here is they like to give up points. So this is a matchup. Atlanta at home. Bijan, come on, Arthur Smith. Give him the ball. 20 plus touches for Bijan Robinson. Here's the thing, y'all. I'm firing them all up. Give me Bijan Robinson. I think that Tyler Algier in a pinch can be flexed. Drake London, I want to start him in this game, and I want to start Kyle Pitts. The Indianapolis defense can be beaten. You look at Indy, let's just go look at their overall defense real quick on the season. This is a defense that you can exploit. You can exploit them defensively. Let's go, if we can go to all that, hell, let's go to the team. Let's look at this, passing, all of that good stuff. And where's the defense at? Where is the offensive plays? Hell, I can't find it right now. I, I don't I don't know what. I'm, oh, opponents. Here we go. Opponents. Total points. Here it is. Indy scored 344. Opponents scored 343. They're scoring 23 a game. They're giving up damn near. I mean, 25 a game. They're giving up 25 a game. I mean, it's identical. This defense can be beaten. They can run on them. Look at the first downs. 106 first downs given up. Passing yards. They, they, they're allowing 220 a game. Rushing attempts. Rushing yards. 4.1 a carry. 127 and 20 touchdowns. If this doesn't scream, Bijan, get it done, baby. I mean, this is the week. This is the week. Bijan Robinson, you're firing him up with little confidence, but you're firing him up. London and Pitts and Tyler Algier in the pinch, which means if you have to take a flyer on Heineke, go ahead. I, I, I'd rather start some other guys, but hopefully he can just YOLO volume his way into some relevance. On the Indianapolis side, Zach Moss, Michael Pittman has worked his way back, so that stud's getting started. Zach Moss, you can start him versus this Atlanta defense. There are no other pass catchers I feel good about. No Josh Downs, no tight ends. Minshew in a pinch, you can flex him as well. It's just crazy how many backup quarterbacks are playing right now in the NFL. But with this total at 44.5, I feel good about our chances for a big B. John Robinson game in this one. Let's go to Green Bay and Carolina. Carolina on a one-game win streak. I, I feel like this carries on. Oh, they, they had won one game. I said the winless Panthers. They had one win prior to that one. But they've got two on the season. Green Bay reeling a little bit. And I don't know if Jaden Reed is in this matchup or not. Not on the injury report. So it looks like Wicks is going to play. Dylan trying to work his way back from the broken hand. Aaron Jones played last week. Started off really hot. Looks like he's going to be in. And nobody on the injury report for the Carolina Panthers. So in this game, who do you want to start? Well, Chuba Hubbard. That's where I'm going to start with. You want to start Chuba Hubbard and Jaden Reed if both of those players are playing. Adam Thielen, if he's going to go. I don't feel good about Bryce Young. And Jordan Love versus a very good pass defense is going to be a tough matchup. So I don't know if Jordan Love is a must start. The running backs in this one from the Green Bay side, Dylan and Aaron Jones. If Jones is, is, is active and going, I would start Aaron Jones. It's Chuba Hubbard is the one that I feel best about. Out of this entire matchup, it's Chuba Hubbard versus this Green Bay defense. Chuba has taken over as the bell cow and has rewarded fantasy managers in a major way. Adam Thielen still being targeted at high clip. This is one where I think it's a little bit of an upset alert. Carolina Panthers, plus five, 37 and a half point total. Got bet up just a tad bit, one point from where it opened at 36 and a half. Let's see if Carolina can carry some momentum over and put the nail in the Green Bay Packers coffin. I think they're just a little, they're, they're, they're a tick away from being right there on the step to be a true playoff contender. Let's see if Bryce Young can build on the momentum, but from a fantasy perspective, there's not a lot of guys in out of this game that I really, really look forward to starting. Tucker Craft at tight end, I believe, is a good, nice option. Jaden Reed, if he's active, play him. Aaron Jones, no thank you to A.J. Dillon. Chuba Hubbard and a little bit of Adam Thielen. Other than that, I am out of this matchup. Let's go to Detroit and Minnesota. Got Nick Mullins going against Jared Goff. 47 and a half point total in this one with the D Detroit Lions at 10 and 4 favored by 3 points. Jared Goff, David Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs, Amon Ross St. Brown, Sam Laporta start them all. We don't need to dive into it too much. It does look like Alexander Madison 
is going to return in this game. But Coach Kevin O'Connell has already said Ty Chandler is going to be our guy. TA, TJ Hawkinson right there on 1,000 yards on the season. Let's get let's get Big Hawk over 1,000. From the, from the Minnesota side, again, another backup quarterback, Nick Mullins in the fold. Looks like Jets is going to play. You start Jets. Addison plays. You start Addison. Hawkinson plays. You start Hawkinson. Are all three going to be smashes in this matchup? Probably not, but with this projected total at 47 and a half, there's going to be some points scored. Ty Chandler, fire him up. Both running backs from Detroit, fire him up. Amon Ra, Sam Laporta, love this one. Excited for this one. Christmas Eve should be fun. A lot of fantasy points in this matchup. Let's go to Jacksonville, Tampa Bay, where it looks like no Trevor Lawrence in this matchup. T-Law is questionable. Zay Jones already listed as doubtful. And some of the uh, big uh, defensive players for Jacksonville, uh, Cisco, Andre Cisco, looks like he may be back. Tyson Campbell still questioned, but hopefully he can play. Chris Godwin in the matchup right here. Baker Mayfield versus potentially C.J. Beathard, Trevor Lawrence. Fire up your bucks. Rashad White should be a locked and loaded top 10 running back. Hell, potentially even top five running back on the week. Mike Evans and Chris Godwin can get the green light as well as Baker Mayfield. If T-Law plays, you fire him up. Travis Etienne. Calvin Ridley, sure, you don't feel great. The one you feel best about is is the tight end, Evan Ingram. That's the one where I'm like, absolutely fire him up. I don't know if Ridley is just a, a locked and locked. You're starting Ridley. Let me just, let's get that out. You're starting Ridley, but I'm not going to sit here and say he is a smash lock to go nuclear in this matchup versus Tampa Bay, but you probably are going to have to start him. I don't think there are any deep sleepers. Parker Washington, if he's on waivers, Maybe in a best ball league, if you need to clear some zeros for some potential points, you can throw Parker Washington in as well. But I think in this matchup, give me those Bucks versus the Jags and ETN. After a couple of down weeks, man, can we get ETN going? I mean, golly, this is looking just as bad as uh, who's the other player we looked at? This is Jerome Ford-esque right here with Travis ETN. Only two touchdowns over the past five weeks and not one game. Over 60 rushing yards. Come on. Travis Etienne and Jacksonville get it going for us in this matchup. 40 and a half point. Look at this, y'all. Open up at 44 and a half. Bet down to 40 and a half. T-Law probably not going to be in this one. Could get a little ugly. Maybe Travis Etienne can get it going. Here we go. Our boys. Our boys. Kyler Murray and Justin Fields. Let's see. 43 and a half point total. Open at 44. Bears favored by four at home versus the Kyler Murray-led Cardinals. Murray is back. Let's talk about that side of the ball really quickly. Fire up Kyler Murray. This is going to be a tough matchup. But the Bears, hey, it might be just a running quarterback fest right here with Kyler and Justin Fields. But understand, this is a difficult Bears defense right here. They made Jared Goff look silly. Hopefully, Kyler Murray's dynamism with his legs and the arm can make the defense feel a little bit of stress and pressure to open some things up for Kyler Murray and his weapons, which he has not developed a lot of chemistry with the outside guys just makes us even more excited to see Marvin Harrison Jr. on that team next year. James Conner, I will start the volume-based running back versus this Bears defense. And Trey McBeast, Trey McBride, my dynasty hell might be tight end one or two really, really soon. Right now, tight end three in dynasty McBride. The chemistry is undeniable with Kyler Murray. He has been, over the last five weeks, the best tight end in fantasy football. Yes, even better than Sam Laporte. The war on Trey McBride is in Incredible. This dude is an absolute monster stud. Told y'all about him all summertime. Hopefully you were able to acquire him because he is a true difference maker. On the Bears side of the ball, there's only one pass catcher outside of Cole Komet that you want to start, and that's DJ Moore. Fire up DJ Moore and Cole Komet. I don't really feel good about any of the running backs. I'll be honest with you. Foreman, Roshan, Khalil Herbert, they're doing this weird three-man rotation with those guys combined with Justin Fields' ability to run the ball. Just give me Justin Fields, who leads the team in rushing right now, firing up Justin Fields, who should smash this Arizona Cardinals defense, who just gave up so many damn yards to Christian McCaffrey and the 49ers. Let's see if Fields can capitalize on this soft defense as well. Let's round this thing out, talking about the Sunday night game first, and uh, it should be an interesting one on Christmas Eve. Probably going to leave some coal in our stockings watching this one with a 34.5 point total. The Bailey Zappi led New England Patriots versus Russell Wilson on the road. They'll be at Denver. I I, <laughs> I don't want to go in this matchup needing a lot of points. Uh, on the Patriots side, 
Zeke Elliott, enlist. Maybe Hunter Henry, enlist. Zeke, Hunter Henry, that's it from the New England side. From the Denver side, I really don't want to start Russ. You have to, sure. Javonta Williams is fine. Sutton and Judy, fine. Other than that, this is a game where I don't want my fantasy playoff hopes and, and the potential to advance to the to the to the championship and, and all that good stuff to hinge in this game. I just do not want to depend on these players from this game. So I don't want to start Pop Douglas. I really don't want to start Jerry Judy. It is Ezekiel Elliott, Javante Williams, Hunter Henry, Cortland Sutton. That's really where I'm at. Jerry Judy as well, but that this is a game where I don't want to be relying on a whole bunch out of this matchup to bring it home for me. And then that leaves us with the Dallas Cowboys and the Miami Dolphins. The big game. Dallas coming off of an absolute ass-kicking to the Buffalo Bills on the road. They travel to Miami to face the hot Dolphins, whose offense is right there at the top of the NFL in scoring points. It does look like Tyreek Hill is going to be back for this matchup. Not sure. I saw some rumblings that Tyron Smith and Zach Martin may be held out of this game. And Dallas doesn't really need to win this game. It'd be good for morality and all that other moral support and all that other shit, but rest your two guys that are banged up. The quad injury for Zach Martin and whatever's ailing Tyron Smith this year, they may, they may sit those guys. And if they sit them, if Hankins sits, that just means it's going to be a monster day for the ground attack of the Miami Dolphins. We're talking fantasy production. I don't care about the Super Bowl and playoffs right now. It's not going to impact Dallas at all in this matchup. So let's just go along the assumption that everybody's in or, uh, or Hankins is out because it doesn't look like he's going to play. Start with Dallas. You can beat Miami through the air. So I've got no issue with Dak Prescott this week. He's a locked and loaded top five option for me at quarterback, along with CeeDee Lamb being a top three option at wide receiver on the week combined with Tyreek Hill. Tony Pollard, you're going to fire him up as well. I mean, he's not, it's not great, but he's getting a ton of volume and a lot of work. Uh, Tony Pollard, that is eighth in the NFL in rushing yards. Just, just a, just a bell cow plotter. Tony Pollard is at this point in time. Other Dallas players that you feel good starting. I think you can start Brandon cooks in this matchup and Jake Ferguson. No doubt is a locked and loaded top six option at tight end versus Miami. Miami side of the ball, Tua gets Tyreek Hill back, and you know that's good for Tua. So you start in Tua, you start in Tyreek, you start Jalen Waddle. no other pass catchers need to hit your lineup, and then you hammer the running backs, Raheem Mostert and Devon Achan. If this big boy, Jonathan Hankins, 6'2", 230, 320 pounds of a monster in the middle, if he's out, I anticipate them just being able to run the ball down Dallas's throat the same way that the Buffalo Bills did with two running backs that are much, much faster than James Cook. So this could get ugly for Dallas on the ground. But with that projected total at 49 and a half, lets me know it's going to be some damn good scoring in this matchup. So fire up your Cowboys, fire up your Dolphins, fire up your players this week. That's what's cracking from the fantasy lens uh, brought to you by yours truly, old GQ. And no, I did not touch on the Baltimore Ravens and the 49ers game because I'm saving that for Christmas. So make sure Christmas evening, right around, I think we'll set the stream, I think the Ravens 49ers play at 8.15 Eastern Standard Time. Potentially, I'm going to jump on the stream about 6 o'clock Central Time, so 7 p.m. Eastern Time. But I will be previewing and talking through the Ravens and 49ers Christmas Day game on Monday. So make sure you tap in for the live stream of that. We'll have a good time. We'll have some fun. Maybe do some Christmas giveaways on the show. We've got a lot of content getting ready to get pumped out tomorrow morning. Trinity video is going to be up, talking through some of the wide receivers. Got a mock draft video that we're going to post on Sunday. we got the Ravens 49ers preview on Monday. And then Scott Connor and I are going to deconstruct and reconstruct the roster on our Destination Chill Wednesday stream. Get over to DD.com. Get in on the tools. Use the war tool, the Trinity tracker. Read the articles. Come engage with the community. Most importantly, get in the Discord. Appreciate y'all being here. Enjoy. Get that last-minute Christmas shopping out of the way. Hit the thumbs-up button. I'm out of this thing, man. Let's hit the outro. Peace.